First Samuel chapter 4. First Samuel chapter 4. We begin reading at verse number 15. <clears throat> at verse number 15. You found it, say amen. If you need some more time, say wait. The Bible says, now Eli was 90 and 8 years old, and his eyes was dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled till the day out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? The messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there have been also a great slaughter among the people. And thou two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backwards by the side of the gate. And his neck broke. And he died, for he was an old man and heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was with child, pregnant, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tiding that the ark of God was taken, that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself in travail, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because, watch this, the ark of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. She named this bouncing baby boy Ichabod and says, the glory has departed. I want to talk about briefly, how did you lose your glory? How did you lose your glory? Turn to somebody and say, how did you lose your glory? Glory. The ability to shine in darkness. Glory. The ability to have joy when you should be crying. Glory. To hold your head up when it should be hung low. Glory. To love people that don't even love you back. Glory. To speak to people that don't, won't even wave back. Glory. When lies are being told, truth and glory still stand. Many of us, if we take the self-examination of the day, we'll discover that, yes, we're children of God. We're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. But if you examine self, you'll have to say to self that there have been times in my life when my glory was gone. Mm. It's sad for the choir to sing and can't feel their own song. Maybe the glory is gone. It's sad for the deacons to pray and never feel your own prayers. It may be. Come on, somebody. The glory is gone. Preachers, pastors, it's sad and sullen to stand in this pulpit and preach sermons and messages that others can feel, but you can't even feel yourself. 
It may be that the glory is gone. To be the drum, but never feel the beat in your heart. Maybe the glory is gone. To strike these ivory and these black keys and make music and melody across this congregation. But the one playing can't even feel it. It may be the glory is gone. To strike this pearl guitar, these strings of melody that make others feel something. But you can't feel nothing yourself. It may be the glory is gone. Well, I'm glad we at the point that we all can make this confession. At some point in life, we've all lost our glory. Reverend, make it a little plainer. Young people, there's always going to come a time in life you're going to lose your motivation. Sometimes you'll even forget where you come from and how you were raised. But thank God we got a reminder. I wish I had a witness in here. I once was young. I got a reminder. Do I have any witnesses in here? I once was young. But bland now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging for bread. I got a reminder. When the glory is gone, I tip through the halls of David. I ring his apartment, his mansion in the sky, and say, King David, I need to talk with you. My glory is a little low. He said, watch this. The Lord is. I've been where you are. The Lord is my shepherd. I wish I had a witness in here that got a point of reference. When the glory is gone, God will remind you that even in darkness, I still can shine. Do I have any witnesses here? Walk with me. We're going to go home and watch Sunday football. Walk with me. Football season, I don't preach long. I just take my time, but walk with me. Uh, walk with me, right? Israel is getting ready to go to battle with the Philistine. And Israel had been living a disobedient, unpleasing lifestyle to God. Israel had become stiff necked and hard headed. Talk with me. And they had gotten off the path of righteousness and started to do their own thing. They're going to war, but they've been disobedient to God. They're going to war, but they hadn't been following the statutes of God. They're going to war, but they hadn't been obedient to the commandments of the Lord. They're going to war, but they forgot about Yahweh and Jehovah. I wish I had a witness in here. They gone to war, but they forgotten about the God that brought mama and grandmama out of Egypt. They, they gone to war, but they forgotten about the God who opened up the Red Sea. And they forgotten about the God who opened up the Jordan River. They forgot about the God who knocked down Jericho. Wall. They gone to war, but they gone to war forgetting about God. They're on the assumption. Joan, they're under the assumption that if we take the Ark of the Covenant with us, even though we've been disobedient, as long as we got the Ark of the Covenant, we can overcome. I wish somebody read this when you get home. Uh, Moody, they go to war. Brother Brooks Brown, they go to war. You read it when you get home. Thirty-some thousand. Soldiers get killed. It's in the book. Read fourth, first Samuel chapter four when you get home. Uh, Thirty some thousand soldiers of Israel don't lose their life. And in the midst of this, Eli, who is 
the priest, the king, would so be of Israel. Ah, has two sons by the name of Hophni and Phinehas. Come here. The name Eli means elevated and lifted up. So Eli thought more of himself than he should. But what really make a child of God is this here pleasant green PG, write it down where you'll never forget it. If you want to really know what a child of God is, watch this. A child of God know who he's not, but know who the Lord is. Do I have any witnesses in here? Uh, the name Eli means high and elevated and lifted up. The name Hophni means fighter. One that's out of control, couldn't control himself. The name Phineas means the mouth of a serpent, which means Phineas was a cursor, a foul mouth. Lord, how much somebody going to see it here in a minute. You got a father who thinks more of himself than he should. He got two bars. One is a cusser, and the other one is a fighter. What a dysfunctional family that is. That don't seem like the Brady Bunch to me. I wish I had a witness in here. They, they, they go to war. While in war, uh, on the Ark of the Covenant is taken. But can I, can I talk with you? Be careful how you think you strong. And you've been living wrong. I can run that rabbit. Somebody ought to say run it. I'm going to do the best I can. If he jump, I'm going to see him. Watch this. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. In verse number nine, John, Israel pokes her chest out. Ah, how nine finish the leaders of the group. They go to Philistine, the Philistine, and they tell him in verse nine, y'all ought to quit. You're not equipped to fight with us because we got the Ark of the Covenant. All right, so Spencer, come here. Come here in case you missed it. The Ark of the Covenant is a little box, four by four box, a little, little small box, huh? not a big box, overlaid in gold, uh, has a piece of the manna, Aaron's rod, the Ten Commandments. Mercy seat, angel on top. Y'all going to get it here in a minute. They, they figured that as long as we got God in a box. I got a sneaky feeling some of you still trying to carry God in a box. But I need to tell you, Sister Owen, my God is bigger than a box. I wish I had a witness in here. A box can only be at one place at one time. I serve a God who steps outside the box. Do I have a witness in here? Can be east, north, west, south at the same time. They figured fain if we can carry him in this box. We got him. But I need to tell you God is bigger than a box. Talk with me somebody. If a grave can't hold him, a box can't contain him. Preach, Moody. I think I will. Listen. Listen. I'm going to do it in just two more minutes. I promise. Watch this. Somebody call the airport and clear the runway. We got an F-16 getting ready to land at Bluegrass. Listen. 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 Never think. Watch this. That when we are wrong, God is there, but also your sin is there. Hmm. Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, they had contaminated the worship of Israel. They was going about worshiping idol gods. They had contaminated the sacrificial sacraments. Of how they killed the pigeons and the, and the cows for a sacrifice. They had contaminated the worshipful experience between Yahweh and his people. And they on their way to battle. 
even though they've been doing wrong. I wish I had a witness in here. If you ever drive your car and you see the sign say wrong way, you're in bad shape. You'll get that on the way home. At some point, you need to turn around. Do I have any help in here, Don? Don't go far north looking for four east and see the sign say wrong way. People will look at you funny. Amen. It's a sign that you need to turn around. Watch this. How did you lose? How did they lose their glory? Number one, in verse number nine uh, through verse 11, there's this punishable offense. They, they got to be punished for the crime. You do the crime, got to do the time. Amen, somebody. Uh, we get caught up in that Jesus that you got on your wall that he shouldn't even be there. My grandfather said he hung one time. Why you want to hang him again? Watch out, Don. I know I'm preaching, Brown. Listen. 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 We get caught up in this meek, mild man of Jesus Christ. Yeah, there is a meek side to him. There's a mild man of side to him. But there's also a chastisement side. To him. In the book of Matthew, he goes into the temple and they sell him. They sell him dove and pigeons. And they sitting at the table collecting money. This mild man of Jesus goes in, turns over the table, and beat him out the temple. And well, somebody said, Well, Reverend, they shouldn't have been selling. No. That's not why he did it. In the book of Malachi, at the last chapter of Malachi, God got angry at Israel because when they would have temple service and get ready to offer up pigeons and doves, the ones who were selling the doves and pigeons would bring one-eyed pigeon and one-legged doves. And God just don't want anything. God wants your best. That's why some of you always wonder why is it that we can't praise God when he's been so good to us we ought to give him our best. I can't give him money because he already got that but every now and then somebody ought to wave your hand and say Lord I thank you. They were in this punishable offense because they had neglected they had assumed that God was in a box. And even with the box, Israel lost the fight. And then the ark of God was taken. I wish I had a witness in here. How do you handle life when God is not in your presence? How do you cope with stress? Sister Kelly, bro, Kelly, how do you handle anxiety, depression, trouble, bills that you can't pay? Got more month than you got money. Your money funny and your change is strange. How do you handle it when God is not present? Life is already difficult, but it's more difficult without the law. Come here. I can prove it's better with him than without him. I hear him right now, white. I hear him right whispering in my ear. I walked with you. I hear him, Diana, saying, I talked with you. I wish I had a witness in here. I'll tell you, you are my own when others don't even want to own you. I'll keep you. But how do you deal with your job, your home, your money, your life, your education, your career, and even your church when God is not present? Yeah. 
Thirty some thousand people lost their lives because somebody was negligent. Somebody didn't stand up and be truthful. That we need more than a box. We need the law himself. Do I have a witness? Because watch this. We said in Alabama back in the country, uh, don't make me lay down my religion. You remember that, such people? Some of you ladies, when you're getting ready to put your hand on your hip, got your finger already pointed out. Come on, Angela, got your finger already pointed out. And you'll say, don't make me lay down my religion. My great mama, our grandmama there, Sister Mud Deer used to say, if you can lay it down, you never had it. She said, so when I get mad, I don't never say I'm going to lay it down. She just said, I put it to the side. I wish I had a witness in here. Punishable often. Sin is punishable. Can I talk with you? Sin is fun. But the consequences is deadly. For the wages of sin is death. But I got a present around the corner. And I don't have to wait once a year to get it. It comes before the 25th of December. And then no big man come down my chimney with no red suit and a red ring deal flying in the sky and dropped it off and ate up my pound cake. I wish I had a witness in here. This gift that you get, you got it this morning. The gift was dropped off at your bedside this morning. All day and all night, the angel. Keep a watch over me. Hey! Watch, 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 watch. This punishable offense. Watch, watch the text. Watch the text. They fought. Israel lost. They started running. Verse 10, they started running. The ark of God was taken. Ah, uh, Hophni and Phineas get killed. That's the punishable offense. But Brother Sammy Brooks. Brother Bland, Brother Mark Don, but number two, we see the punishable offense. But number two, when the glory is gone, there's a hard pill you have to swallow. Uh, uh, y'all missed that. Y'all, y'all don't know old folks talk. Keep on having birthdays. Uh, my, my mom and daddy, grandmama and granddaddy used to say, watch this. The lie is like a pill. Sometimes it's hard. To swallow. All right, you don't remember that one? Listen to this one right here. This your little red wagon. You can push it or pull it. You made your bed hot. I wish I had a witness in here. You fool with trash. Listen, 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 listen. A painful pill to swallow is when you know you caused it all. When you have to settle by yourself. The room is dark. The TV is off. And the Lord come to you and say, you the call of it all. That's a hard pill. To swallow. Because most of us, we like pointing fingers. That relieve us of the pressure and the burden of our own wrongdoing. I wish I had a witness in here. But Eli have to accept the fact that he was in charge. He gave the order to go fight. Knowing that his boys was not right. Can I talk with you? Uh, when you know you're not right, you don't do a whole lot of talking. If you really want to know how crazy a person is, listen to them when they know they're wrong. <clears throat> They'll go to talk about two years ago what you've done to them. 
No, you remember in 1998. You'd be like, well, this, baby, this 2023. You remember in kindergarten, you took my colors. Couldn't use my crayon. But wait, but wait, but wait. I thought we were playing. I didn't know we were for real. When you and I are compared and have to deal with wrongness, we'll go to talking crazy. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Come here, Adam. Adam said, uh uh, God, don't blame me. It's the woman you gave me. Now, you hadn't gave it to me. I wouldn't even be in this shape. The woman said, wait a minute, baby. Wait a minute, Adam. Now, hold up. You ain't going to be talking about me like that. It wasn't me, God. It was that doggone snake. I wish I had a witness in here. Emerson, when you're faced with your own wrongness, you start talking crazy. You start trying to fulfill a void. That's a square, and you're trying to put something in a box. A box and a square don't go together. Preach, Shields. I think I will. Listen. Listen. Listen to this painful pill to swallow. If you don't mind, and we're going to go get us some fried chicken and some potato salad. Listen to this. Somebody said, sound good to me, too. Listen. Listen. That was a man from the Benjamin tribe. He escapes. God always got somebody. Come here, Joe. When trouble came, one always came, Joe, your boys and daughters today, but I alone escapes. Ah, this fella from the Benjamin tribe, Brother Ben, he escapes. He escapes. Sister Bland, he escapes. Sister Lynn, he escapes. Sister Taylor, he escapes. Janice, he escapes. Kelly, he escapes. Brother Hayden, he escapes. Goes and knocks on Eli Do. Watch the text. Text says that the same day he had his clothes torn off of him, he had earth upon his head, meaning his head was full of dirt. And when he came to Eli, Eli was sitting upon a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? In other words, tumult means, what is all the commotion about? What, what's going on? Did I miss something? Watch this. And the man came in hastily, verse 14, and told Eli. Now watch verse 15, how it turns and makes a transition to let us know this is a hard pill to swallow. Eli was 98 years old. He's 98. Somebody don't know when to say something. He's 98. Nearly blind. The Bible says, Sister Spencer, that his eyes are dim. He lived 98 years. Now he almost at the point of losing his eyesight. The man said, Eli, I am the one that came out of the army. I escaped to tell you. And Eli said, what is that done, my son? What you here to tell me? Watch this hard pill to swallow. The message announcement said Israel is running before the Philistine, and there have been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, they are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God. Somebody stop right there. Hold up. Hold up. Systematic theology. Hold up, Don. Look at the text. See the theology, the system around it. If you just look at the text, the text says, when he heard of the Ark of the Covenant, that it had been taken. 
But wait a minute. Before he ever told him about the Ark of the Covenant, he told him about his two boys. But his two boys died and didn't bother him. How do you live life as a parent when you expect your child to die because of the way they live it? How else could you not die when one of your boys is a fighter and another want to cuss everybody out? Grandmama said, just a matter of time, you run into somebody bigger and better than you. He said, your boy's dead. And then him. Come on, Smith. Come on, Payne. Come on, Giving. Your boy's dead. All right. Next. Okay, y'all didn't get it. Uh, Sister Patina, boy's dead. Next. Okay, but right. The boy's dead. Next. But child, the boy's dead. Next. The ark of God has been taken. And it came to pass. Watch this. I didn't make it up. It's in your Bible. It came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell from off his seat backward by the side of the gate, hit his head, and broke his neck and died. Two sons being dead didn't even cause him to fall. I'm going to take my little time now on you thinking about this thing. you on the edge of your seat. If you ever eat at a good restaurant, Lee, you know good food. Amen, somebody. How do you handle life when people around you, you know they live in Rome? So when they die, it don't even bother you. But this just wasn't anybody. This is the father who got to go to two funerals. But as soon as they talked about his God, ooh, Lord, how much it. Uh, come here, Queen B. Y'all know Queen B. Beyonce Knowles. Jay-Z White. I don't know how he got her ugly as he is. Uh, that's another sermon. Look at the men. They all, that's right, pastor. That's right, pastor. Uh, look at Brother Brooks. He done turned all the way around. Him. That's right, Rip. That's right. Uh, uh, before she got to be Queen B, Jones, uh, JB, before she got to be Queen B, she sung with a group called Destiny Child. And their famous song that they came out with that made number one on the chart was well, Say My Name. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, I, I don't know what name she was talking about. But when my glory is gone, there is another name. I wish I had a witness in here that I have to say. And don't make me run that name. Paul told me his name is Jesus. There's no other name. I wish I had a witness. When trouble is in your way, say my name. Say my name. Uh, I'm finished. I promise. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He fall backwards, break his neck, and he dies. Watch this. The Bible said, watch this. For he was old man and heavy. Well, heavy means two, two theologian arguments are there. According to Oxford University, one Hebrew word means that he was fat. One preacher preached a message. Uh, speed said, an old man that was fat fell, broke, and died. Uh, one 
school of thought, said the word heavy mean his burdens was on him. I ought to have some churchgoers in here that can say I've had my share of life ups and downs. My burdens have been heavy, but through it all, I got somebody. When my burden get heavy, he comes along, take my burdens away. Do you know him? Say his name. Here we go. I'm finished. We see a punishable offense. We see a hard pill to swallow. But number three, we see a fruitless ending with hope. A fruitless, not fruitful, but fruitless ending with hope. Thank God that he always gives us hope. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I had some hope Christians in here. Anybody been hope? I didn't say help. Grandmama never said been help. You been hoped. Huh. Uh, watch it, I'm finished. Watch it, I'm finished. Here we go. Uh, uh, Phineas' wife was pregnant. And word come to Phineas' wife, listen, your husband did. Your brother-in-law did. Your father-in-law did. Y'all ain't getting this. A fruitless ending with hope. It's looking bad right now. Husband dead. Brother-in-law dead. Father-in-law dead. And you pregnant. Lord, how much. Who got him out of lane. I'm about to bust a bubble right here myself. If I had some chewing gum, I'd blow a bubble. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. Listen to him. Pregnancy is a blessing that's hidden from natural eyesight. Pregnancy is a blessing that's hidden from natural eyesight. You can't see what's growing on the inside. But you know something there. And sooner or later, it's going to get big enough that the inside can't hold it. It's going to have to come outside. Do I have a witness here? Phineas' wife, this, this foul mouth fella, serpent mouth Phineas, wife, pregnant. She's already at the point of giving birth. Watch the Bible. They come in and tell her, listen, your husband dead, brother dead, your father-in-law is dead. She bowed herself. Ugh. And travail for her pains came upon her. Listen to this. And about that time of her death, y'all don't know when to say amen. Watch this. Hophni dead. Phineas dead. Eli dead. And now the wife dead. But it's still hope. Somebody don't know when to say amen. So let me go over that again. Let me go over that again. Uh, Brother Lewis, uh, Brother Briscoe, listen. Eli did. Hophni did. But Charles Phineas is dead. Suspense, the wife, is dead. But before she died, Before her head gets cold and her eyes get dim, she looks over and they put this baby in her arm. And breath is leaving her. She's getting ready to check out of here. She looks at that bouncing baby boy and named him Ichabod. Saying the glory has departed out of Israel. 
It's in your Bible. What does she mean? My husband is dead. Brother-in-law, gone. My father-in-law is dead. And now I'm about to die myself. But I'm going to name this boy. And I'm going to name him after what I'm going through. Lord, have mercy. She didn't name him Joy. Because she wasn't having joy. She named him Ichabod. Because she had no glory. She had nothing to shout about. I wish I had a praying church here. That know when you think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he's done for you. Somebody ought to cry out hallelujah. But she said, Ichabod, I don't have no reason to shout. But here is hope for the future. The bouncing baby boy did live. Can I get a witness? And when everybody called his name Ichabod, it made everybody else think that I don't want my glory gone. I want to keep God's glory. Do I have a witness? True story. As I get ready to leave you here, a young lady, 12 years old, by the name of Kaylee, K-A-L-I, Hardick, H-A-R-D-I-G, 12 years old in July, was swimming in a pond in the backyard in Arkansas on one hot afternoon. And Kaylee got through swimming, came back up to mom and daddy's house. A couple of days went by, she started having migraines. These migraines were so painful, and she started catching a temperature. It had registered over 103. And the mother and father said, we better rush Kaylee down to the emergency room. Come here, Pleasant Green. When they got down to the emergency room, the doctors rushed Kaylee in. True story, and I'm going on home now. They rushed Kaylee in and did test and diagnosed her case as a parasitic meningitis, which is a brain-eating bacteria that she caught while she was swimming. I wish I had a witness here. And uh, the doctors uh, told the parents uh, that uh, we don't have no known survivors. I ought to have a witness here of uh, this meningitis, this brain-eating bacteria. We don't have no survivors in North America. Read it for yourself. And and uh, the story goes on to say that she stayed in the hospital for six months. They gave her antibiotics in an IV, fluid, and all other kind of medicine. Well, at the beginning of the sixth month, the daddy told her mother, I got to go back down to the office. I need to check on some things, and I'll be right back. And sat here with you and Kaylee. She said, baby, go ahead, take your time. I'm going to stay right here and watch over my daughter. And uh, when the daddy left out, she said another man came in. And uh, looked at her and said, I am the chaplain. And uh, if you don't mind... Uh, I like to pray for little old Kaylee. And she scratched her head and said, How did you know my daughter's name was Kaylee? He never said a word, uh, but said, Do you mind uh, if I pray uh, for little old Kaylee? And uh, he laid uh, his hand uh, on Kaylee. And uh, begin to pray uh, in the name of Jesus. 
Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. When he got through praying, he looked at the mother, and the mother said the word. Yes, Lord. All of her glory is gone. She been here six months and don't even look like herself. All of her glory is gone. She said the man never said nothing. But Mark done. He walked out the room and she didn't see him no more. A few minutes later the doctor came in. True story. Looked at the heart monitor. It was be normal. I wish I had a witness. Her blood pressure had been regulated. Can I get a witness? She started moving. Yes, Lord. The doctor said to the mother, what in the world is going on? She said, a few minutes ago, the chaplain came in and prayed for my little girl. The doctor said, wait a minute. Say, who came in? She said, the chaplain came in and prayed for my little girl. He said, well, ma'am, it couldn't have been a chaplain from here. We don't even have a chaplain program. Do I have a witness? And she said, if it wasn't nobody from here, it must have been somebody from there. Do I have a witness? Won't God give your glory back? Won't God make a way for you? Stand up on your feet. Grab somebody's hand. Say, neighbor, the God I serve will make a way for you. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Anybody in here can testify God been good to you. When I name something he's done for you, just wave your hand. You were sick. He healed your body. You were down. He picked you up. You were lost. And he found you. You were on your way to hell. But one Friday, one Friday, I said one Friday, one Friday, he died, didn't the Lord die, he died, ah, he died, but I lie. do I have a witness here, Sunday morning, he got up out the grave. Shake somebody's hand. Tell him I got somebody. Tell him I got somebody. When my burden get heavy, I got somebody. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Turn to somebody else. Turn to somebody else and hold their hand like a child of God. Come on, Pleasant Green. Turn to somebody and hold their hand like a real child of God and look them in the eye and say, Neighbor, you holding a miracle. I should have been dead and gone. I should have been outdoors, no roof, no food, but say, neighbor, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 joy. Yes, he will. Can you wave your hand? Say, yes, he will. Ah, yes, he will. Yes, he will. The 
the door open. 